This video is on brain herniations. So herniations, now your brain in your skull is a very enclosed space. There's not a lot of room. And so if you have a mass, a tumor, fluid, if you have a hemorrhage, like an epidural hemorrhage, it can push and compress your brain and herniate your brain. And that's the topic of this video. Now herniation means protrusion of tissue through an opening. Through an opening. Huh. We haven't talked a lot about openings in, in neuro. In fact, I think we only talked about one of them. We talked about how, if this is your brain, I've drawn, I've drawn this so much times, but it seems to get worse. This is your brain, and you have your spinal cord, and your brainstem, and your cerebellum. We said you have your skull that protects your brain. And to allow a passage of your spinal cord, there's an opening. We call that opening the foramen magnum. It means big opening. So that's one opening. Is there any more? Is there any sort of structures these things can herniate through? In fact, there is. So if we look at the brain, this is the side view. If we look at it from the back view, you have your hemispheres. And then you have your cerebellum, which is a little goober. And then you have your brainstem and your spinal cord. Yeah, well, your CNS is covered by your meninges. That's your dura mater, your arachnoid, your pia mater. Your dura mater forms this invagination that goes right between the hemispheres and kind of keeps them apart. Otherwise, if there's nothing there, it like congeal together. So, so we call this structure the falx cerebri. And that keeps the hemispheres apart. There's also something that keeps the cerebellum apart from the occipital lobe. Again, otherwise it'd be like one, one massive lobe. So there's another dura invagination that keeps the cerebellum apart. And with this we call the tentorium cerebelli. So these three structures, the foramen magnum, the tentorium cerebelli, and the falx and the falx cerebri are gonna be our three structures where our brain can herniate through, can go through. The most common is gonna be your brain herniating through this falx cerebri. So right at the edge, you have this fold of brain, aka a gyrus, called the cingulate gyrus. Cingulate gyrus. And let's just say there's a massive tumor right here, and it's pushing that. Well, the cingulate gyrus can go under and through that fox cerebri. We call this, as you can imagine, we call this cingulate herniation. Easy enough name to remember. Sometimes they might just call it something else. They call it sub falcine herniation. Sub meaning under, falcine meaning under the falx, so under the falx. These are two in the same, okay? So don't get confused with the terminology. And this little gyrus just goes under the falx. This is one of the more milder but more common ones. When it goes under the falx, what can it compress? That's what we're really concerned about. Things it can compress. I'll give you a hint. There are three arteries that supply the blood to your brain. That's your anterior, middle, and posterior cerebral artery. What artery goes right through the hemispheres? That'd be your anterior, your ACA. So it can compress the ACA and cause loss of distribution, blood distribution in your ACA areas. Hopefully that's not too bad. Next one is if you have some sort of upward force or upward tumor, upward fluid, upward hematoma, doesn't matter, compressing your brain down through this tentorium cerebrum. Cere 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 <laughs> Sometimes they might use fancy terminology, call it downward transtentorial which is a fancy way of saying downward through the trans, through the tentorium. So, and when you press down on it, then you compress basically everything downstream and you can compress against another vessel. And I'll give you another hint when we're talking about this vessel. It comes from two vertebral arteries and it fuses together. That'd be your basilar artery, basilar. So it can compress on that, especially compress on these small branches called your Paramedian branches, causing the burst, causing the hemorrhage. We call these hemorrhages 
direct hemorrhages. And this is just bad news bears. It can cause death. All right, so that is central, aka downward transtentorial herniation. If it's not just if it's not just this nice midline downward push, sometimes you can have a lateral push and it causes a little piece near the tentorium to herniate. There's a little piece near the tentorium called the uncus, and the uncus is part of your temporal lobe. And when that uncus herniates under your tentorium, I just like saying the word uncus. If that uncus herniates under your tentorium, we call that uncle herniation. Uncle herniation probably has the most complicated and the most numerous side effects that you have to know about. It can compress against your occipital lobe because we're nearing the bottom of the brain. Um, there's an artery that supplies your occipital lobe. What is that? It's your PCA. It's because of PCA. And if it's on your and if it's on your left side, then it'll just compress your left PCA because that's what's because that's the side that's herniating. So our ips lateral. Now, when we were doing our PCA, especially when we were doing aneurysms, we said there is a structure near your PCA, and aneurysms could affect that. Do you recall what that structure was? That'd be cranial nerve three. So you can have cranial nerve three palsy. And then last but not least, if it's herniating, so if the left side is herniating, then it'll kind of push on the right side. And it'll push on the right brain, especially your cerebellar peduncle. Recall that's a, those are the things that send signal from your cerebellum to your, to your brain. And we say that sends things contralaterally and your brain will send things contralater contralaterally back. And that's a double negative, so it cancels out and it'll affect the ipsilateral side. So if you have a left herniation, you might have right-sided symptoms. We call this false localization sign. False localization. Because the signs show up on the wrong side. Now the last opening that your brain can herniate through is your foramen magnum. And this is usually your cerebellum. And it can herniate through. There is tissue in your cerebellum that looks kind of like tonsils, so we call it cerebellum tonsils, so they just call it tonsillar herniation. And that is through your foramen magnum. And similar to this downward herniation that compressor brainstem causes hemorrhage, this will also compress your brainstem and cause death, usually by inhibiting respiration. All right, so you kind of die from that. So right, inhibit respiration. Now the last topic in our herniation talk is not going to be a herniation through these three normal structures. Instead, if you have a fracture in your skull, and there's an opening here, then your brain can herniate out of that. That's, that's not a normal structure. That's quite abnormal. This is called transcalvaryl. And that's a herniation through a hole or a fracture that's not supposed to be there. That's all your herniations. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.